طيب بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله و praises to Allah سبحانه وتعالى and we send peace and blessings upon his beloved Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم so my brothers inshallah I just want to maybe just share just a few things that come to mind this is not like a prepared talk but heck يعني especially because I see a lot of younger brothers may Allah سبحانه وتعالى reward them I guess let me say that I'm speaking general. I can't cover every aspect of this topic. I'm generalizing. I know in any subject, there's always specifics and there's always exceptions. So please don't come to me after and tell me, but brother, I have an exceptional case. We understand, so I'm mentioning this now. Um, I know there's exceptional cases, but what I'm going to say to you now is I'm generalizing. And what I want to say to you, my brothers, is that in Islam, we know the value of the mother and the father. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned their ranks and he's raised them in the Quran and he's ordered the believers to be kind and dutiful. And I'm going to also mention, because I know what's going to happen, to brother, you spoke about the father and what about the mother? Wallah, you can't win. Again, the mother definitely has her rank and Jannah is at the footsteps of your mom. And yes, in the, you know, in the hadith, when the man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he says to my Prophet of Allah, who is most deserving? Who is most deserving of my kind treatment? So he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says to me, your mother. He says, then who? He says to me, your mother. He says, then who? He says to me, your mother. Three times. He says, and then who? This is then your father. This is about kind treatment, about showing love. So he, so, so yes, we know the ranks. We know the ranks of the mother. I'm not taking anything away from this. But what I wanted to specifically mention is your father and the value of your father. I'm going to do my best to keep my emotions in check. I will do my best, but no promises. There's the Bil Walidan and the orders of Allah. That's number one. But really what I want to mention to you is my brothers, no one on this earth, no one on this earth will love you and care for you more than your father. No one. Please brothers, no one to be recording inshallah. No one take photos. Please put your phone down. No one on this earth will love you and care for you and have a burn in his heart for you more than your father. Again, don't come to me later with exceptions. And there's always exceptions. There's always, Ya Latif, very bad fathers. But I'm speaking general. And it's important that you know that. That your father is the most valuable person in your life. Irrespective of who he is. With all of his flaws and all of his mistakes, he is your father. And يعني, I don't know what else to say. يعني, how do I say it in a way where, brother, you know your father? He owns you. And some brothers, sometimes they come to me and they mention, and it's like, you know, I try to be nice to them because I don't want to break their hearts. But really, in my message today, I feel like I can't afford to tippy toe because... I don't want the message to be distorted in any way, you know. Let me tell you, you know, as they say in, you know, in Lebanese, brother, let me shoot you straight. You know your father? He owns you. You know what he owns you means? He owns you. He owns your clothes. He owns your shoes. He owns your money. You know your money? If your father, if, if, I'm not encouraging fathers, I'm just giving you. If your father took every single dollar you own, you have nothing in front of Allah. You have nothing in the Islamic courtroom. You have nothing because he owns you. He owns your wealth. He owns your clothes. He, he owns everything about you. He owns you. That's your dad. And don't ever think in your life that any man on this earth 
will ever love you and care for you and want goodness for you more than your father. Impossible. I'll challenge anyone. You know, my young brother, you know your father, Wallah, the kaf. You know, if your father slapped you with all his heart, the kaf from your father is more beloved, is, should be more beloved and dearer to you than a thousand hugs from the boys on the street, from a thousand hugs from your wife, from a thousand hugs from your children, because that cuff that comes from your dad, you know exactly where it came from. Whereas those hugs on the streets, and those hugs that come from your wife, and those hugs that come from the... Wallah, you don't know what price you're going to pay behind those hugs and those smiles. But whereas with your dad, you know exactly that when he whacked me, as much as it hurts, you know it came from the core of his heart for your goodness only. Our fathers are deeply flawed. No one is perfect. Sometimes your understanding of Dean is ten times better than his. But he's your dad and he owns you. Wallah, the shoe that your father wears, you know, the shoe that he wears, you should put it and wear it on your head like a crown. Not because of the value of the shoe, may Allah raise you all in ranks, but of the value of the one that wears it. It's your dad. And it is unbelievably selfish that a young man comes and says to me, but why can't I do what I want? Wallah, brother, I've got news for you. You, my brother, and you, my sister, you didn't fall from the sky. Someone bled and cried and broke their backs to watch you grow and become a young man. You're owed. And you're in debt. So don't come to me now because, mashallah, you know, I'm in my teens and, you know, I've got my own thoughts and, you know, I see things differently to my father that now there's this, there, you know, that there's this resistance towards my dad and, 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 you know what, wallah, brother, you know, I'm free. People told me I'm free. Brother, who's free? The biggest lie that is running around now is this concept of freedom. That, wallah, brother, I'm free. That I'm free to do what I want. That I'm free to say what I want. That I'm free. Brother, what? I'm going to try and control myself, you know. What, what, where, like, where does this come from? Where? Where? Even putting Dean aside, who on this earth is free? Every single one of us is governed one way or another. You're governed, you're controlled, you're owned. You didn't fall from the sky, my brother and my sister, right? And now for you to just tell me, oh, well, brother, you know what? I fell in love with this girl. And, you know, I don't understand why my father doesn't like her. And, you know, it's, it's, brother, it's not for your dad to understand. Again, I'm generalizing here. So don't come to me with your, you know, exceptions. My young sister, your dad, your dad, whether you like him or not, he, 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 he talks to you, he engages with you or not. You should only ever marry the person that your father says to you, him, take him. Now start talking to him. Now start texting that guy. Now start falling in love with that person. Don't go fall in love with someone outside of your father's knowledge. And, and, and trust me, I'm putting aside the halal and haram factor here. Major haram. But anyway, I'm going to assume that he did it for good. And, and you know, the songs we sing to each other, right? Don't go falling in love with someone right outside of your father's knowledge and then build an emotional relationship with this person for three four months and now you've invested in this for three four months to the point where you yourself don't even realize your head over heels you see nothing other than him and now you're trying to find a way how am i going to present this in front of my dad and above all how am i going to convince my dad to accept him that's oppression why? Because you took the rights of your father away from him. Really deep down, you're not asking your dad, can I marry him? What you're really saying to your dad is, uh, look, this is the one. You know, you work on yourself, but really make it happen. doesn't work like that.
Your dad sees what you don't see. Now, I'm not belittling you. Wallah, I'm not. But you have to understand, you know, even for the Arab, they say that the person who's, I, feel, I forget the expression, but, but it's something like, you know, the one who's older than me by one day is like, you know, he's like more knowledgeable and has more foresight by like one year. Why? Because time, it's time, it's experience. When your father looks at a woman for your sake, or he looks at a man for your sake, he knows, my young brother, your dad knows what you're thinking. And trust me, he's thinking for that. He's thinking that for you too. But he's also thinking about things that you can't see right now. So when he says to you, don't marry her, he knows that you're, wallah, mashallah, you're swept off your feet. But what he can see, you can't. And this is where you have to submit. You have to submit, not only to Allah, but if you're dead, again, I know, but if your dad is generally an upright, God-fearing man, and he says to you, no, wallah, if the world and everything in it was presented to you, so long as your father is not radian, don't you in your life marry her or him. Ever. My young brother, if you're trying to marry a girl, and wallah, I'm speaking to you here, I'm trying to be as diplomatic as possible. Brother, if you're speaking to a girl without her father's knowledge, and yeah, I'm going to give you that your intention is good. But as soon as you know, my brother, that her father doesn't want you, and you've genuinely tried and he doesn't accept, have some shame, have some dignity, have some shut off, leave her and walk away. Because you don't know the hara in the heart, bro. When you watch your daughter grow and you bleed and you cry and you do everything you can so that there's a roof over her head, right? And then she comes and she brings you a guy, Mabtarif Aslu Mannan, where he came from, where he started, where he ended, and she comes and she says, to But wallah, dad, look, I'm in love. You might as well kill your father. We have to be conscious of ourselves, my young brothers. Life is not fair. Get over it. Life is about ta'a, obedience. Your father owns you. Wallah, your father is the only man on earth. And I can, bro, I'll say this. On the summit of the highest mountain. Because I've been there and I've tested and I got burnt and I got... And I thought at one stage, no one... Your father is the only man who genuinely, genuine wishes and desires that you turn out to be better than him. No one else on earth can ever take that. No sheikh, no alim, no mufti, no friend, no kawi, no, no one. Only with all his flaws. You see, sometimes when we speak about Biril Wali, then we have this rosy idea that my mom's the most amazing person on earth and I love her and she loves me and everything's amazing. So whenever the idea of loving parents, you see people, they're just so, oh my God. Da, da, da. Brother, but that's not, you know, what do I, I don't know, like, I don't know what to say. That's not the masses. And if you have that, Wallah. You are very fortunate. Make shukr and thank Allah Azza wa Jal. But the truth is for most of us, that's not the case. Most of us were the least favorite sibling. Or maybe you're married to the least favorite daughter-in-law. Or you're married to the least favorite son. This is the world. That's the truth. I try, I try with my parents and you know, I feel like no matter how much I give, I'm always at a loss. So people come and it's almost like they present the situation as in, you know, brother, sheikh, and look, can I back off? Can I leave him? That's your deen. That's what Allah chose that father with all of his mistakes and all of his, that's, that's, the, that's the crown Allah put on my head. So your relationship with your parents isn't a thing of wallah, you know, but brother, I don't feel like it. Wallahi samihli. Brother, aslan anta minak to tell me how, what you feel like. 
If it wasn't for the sarmaya of your father, anta aslan, where are you, bro? That those young brothers, you know, when your mother and your father, and you can see the hara in his eye, bro, you see the... But I see father so many times, you know, he reaches a point where he thinks, brother, look, Anna, I'm at my wit's ends. Like, what do I do here? Like, do I physically smash my son because he doesn't seem to understand, right? Or do I let him go and watch him burn in front of my eyes? And you don't realize, most of us, this is the ultimatum that we're giving our parents. He can see that woman's going to destroy you. He can see that that man that you fall in, he can see that's not, and, you, and he's watching, he can see that these boys that you're so in love with, that these boys that are taking you to this place and that, he can see it. But I'm trying to talk to my son and he won't understand. So what do I do? If I physically attack my son, not only do I lose him and break him, but even it's actually even against the law. So that's a problem. And if I let him go, it's like a dagger. Every day it just goes slowly and slowly into my heart. And my son thinks he's what? And who he's on top of it. It's unfair. Wallah, it's unfair. This is oppression. You would rather live with the oppression that your parents put on you than the oppression you put on them. This is life. Get over it. I'm not going to sit here and, well, uh, you know, this is life, Akhi. That man that you call your dad and that woman that you, the shoe that you wear, like that, like that here. Life isn't perfect. The man came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the authentic hadith. So he comes to the Prophet, and I love this hadith for multiple reasons. He comes to the Prophet of Allah and he says to him, look, yani, I'm paraphrasing, but more or less, he says to my Prophet of Allah, I have family, I get close, they push me away. I do good, they repel bad. I try to connect, they disconnect. And you really, from the tone, and nothing's changed when people come present their cases. Sounds exactly the same. That look, brother, don't think I've come. Brother, you don't understand. And I've been doing this for years. So what does he say to him, sallallahu alayhi wasallam? I love this. He says to him, look, if what you say is true, because he hasn't heard both sides of the story yet. Look at the justice. Look, he says, if what you say is true, and look, if it's really what you're saying, what, Stop. Brother, oh my God, I can't believe you've gone through so much. No, 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 brother. You know, what, what's that? Is that what she did? Ya Latif, bro, what? We love that haki. Oof, bro, I've never heard that in my life. Ya Latif, bro. Ah. He says, if what you say is true, then keep doing what you're doing. Don't stop. For this is Silat al Raham. Do you think Silat al is all rosy? It's all, Allah, they invited us to their weddings and we invited them to our weddings and we all love each other and we all get along. It's difficult. It's bitterness. It's harakat. It's di He says to him, keep doing what you're doing and know if what you're saying is true that they're digging for themselves their own place in Jahannam. But as far as you're concerned, keep doing what? What you're doing? Adfa' billati here. You do better. Yeah. My young brother, you know, I get it. I understand. You know, you've hit your late teens. You want to hang out. You want to go out. You want to do this. You want to hang out with mates. I get it. But be careful. Be very careful. You know? Because again, you're not seeing what you're doing. And this kalam and wallah brother, you know, I'm my own man, that I'm free to do whatever I want. No, I'm sorry, you're not free. You're owed. You are owned and you owe. Yeah, not only are you owned, but you owe, yeah, you owned it. And again, it's incredibly selfish that imagine like you as a father, you as a father, you plant a seed, right? I'm giving you an analogy here. You plant a seed, and I fertilize that land, and I water and I irrigate the land, 
and I watch over the seed for 17 years of my life. When the storms came, when the storms went, when the droughts were in, when the droughts were out, I, I invested 17 years in watching this tree grow because I know it's going to eventually produce fruit and that that fruit is for me to eat and to enjoy. So now I watch this tree. Imagine you, you're working for 17 years and just as this tree reaches the point where it starts to produce fruits, a complete stranger, someone off the street, you don't know who he is, where he's from, who his father is, nothing. He comes to the tree that you planted and takes the fruits that you've been waiting for. Would you accept that? Wallah, I think this is recorded. So I was going to say something, but uh, Wallah, I actually, I'm worried if I can actually be imprisoned for it or be, because... Brother, if you think I'm going to let, if you think I'm going to watch someone come and eat my fruits in front of my eyes and my son's going to tell me, and Wallah, dad, you know, Wallah, look, again, I'm going to keep myself in check, bro. My Allah never ever test me, bro. Wallahi. Wallah. You're putting a dagger in your father's heart. You're killing him. That your history, your fruits belong to him. The best of you, the best of your time, the best of your efforts, the best of your money belongs to him. And if he allows, you can give your scraps to your friends. If he sermeli allows it, then God give your friends whatever he doesn't want. Because trust me, young brother, if Allah blesses you, you're going to have a child one day, bro. And you're going to know the value of raising a child. Life isn't fair. Wallah, I was only supposed to give you advice. Oh, my heart. Samhuni, bro. Wallah. Please, my brothers, wallah, we need to be very careful, man. Very careful. Your father, what does he? He what? Owns he owns you, bro. You have no idea, and I don't mean this in a bad way. You have no idea how many people in this room saved marriages for years. What, you think you're the only one that's not happy? Do you think you're the only one that's struggling in life? You don't know, my brother. You don't know. Wallah. You don't know how many fathers, bro. You know, he, he what's the expression, you know? Like he, he, ata'an nafsu, bro. He, he, he haram nafsu. He deprived himself from luxuries that he's been wanting. Yeah? So you can wear those shoes that you love. Why? Because he doesn't want you to feel like you can, you know, that you have to walk around in the streets and that, you know, that Wallahi haram holu, bro. He deprived himself. You think money falls from, from the skies? He deprived himself. Not only did he deprive himself, he deprived himself and made sure that you didn't feel it one bit. So you can enjoy those shoes fully. And then you come and tell me, well, but brother, like, all right, so what if that's what my dad wants? So what? Yeah, so what, brother? And I'd wife flip tables and start throwing chairs. Yeah. Brother, how arrogant can you be? How? What do you mean, so what? So my young brothers, make sure, make sure that in your life, you put your father in the right position. Not only for his pleasure, but know that when your father smiles at you, know that Allah Azza wa Jal in the heavens has become pleased with you. Zakum al khairan subhanakallahumma bihamdika shadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa tubu